How's everyone doing today? My name is Sean Clancy. I'm one of the instructors for nationalcsicamp.org where we examine a lot of different sciences and STEM principles that go into solving crimes. Today, what we're gonna do is a drill. Since many kids are at home, uh, we're giving you a, uh, a lesson. And this drill, if the parents wanna pause it once they get some of this stuff together, uh, they're more than welcome to do so. So what we're gonna need for this drill, and this drill has to do with fingerprinting, uh, as the title of this video says. So we're gonna need a ruler. We're gonna need a number two pencil. We need a Sharpe marker or Sharpie marker as uh, I sometimes call it. And uh, if you have a pencil sharper, pencil sharpener, uh, we could probably use that as well. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is set up, we're gonna end two pieces of paper. So the one piece of paper, uh, I'm going, we're gonna put some boxes on there and we're going to measure those those boxes out. So every two inches on the bottom of the paper, we're going to make a little tick mark and do the same on the top of the horizontal paper every two inches to compartmentalize that piece of paper. The piece of paper is roughly eight and a half inches wide. We're going to cut that in half. So do two tick marks. 4.25 and then 4.25 and you're going to draw a horizontal line between them using your Sharpe magic marker. Now the ticks at the top and the bottom of the sheet of the horizontal paper you're going to redefine those with the marker just to make them a little bit more deliberate and the compartments more noticeable. Once you're done that, you're going to label each box. So the first, well, before you even do that, I'm sorry, you're gonna put your name at the top of the, or the left side of the piece of paper, the date, the time, and the location. Now what this is effectively is going to be is our fingerprint uh, worksheet or fingerprint card. Now each one of those boxes should be labeled. So starting with your right hand, the top boxes, these top boxes, this should be R T H U M B, R thumb. And then the next box over should be index, R index. And then R middle, and these are standing for, if you haven't figured it out yet, fingers. R ring for your ring finger. And R pinky for your little finger. And you're going to do the same thing with those blocks down there with your left. Now on the other piece of paper, and again, this is going to be a very, very short drill. Um, the long part is identifying each one of those fingerprints. So what I need you to do is in a, probably about a two inch box, like so, draw that on a piece of paper. And you are going to take the side of the pencil and color that box in as much as possible. You do a couple different coats so it's nice and dark. You actually turn that piece of paper and do it sideways and this concept will be covered again in searches when we talk about processing a crime scene. Once that square is covered, you're gonna have your scotch tape ready and you're gonna roll your left pointer finger or index finger on the graphite. <clears throat> and with the tape, you're gonna put that tape on there Again, make sure there's not an existing fingerprint on there. Once that fingerprint is captured, you're gonna take it off. And put it in the left index box. Like so.
And what you're going to do for each figure is you can keep continue, continue to use the same box and keep adding more graphite to it. And again, I'm, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start with the left. It doesn't matter if you start with your left or right. And do the same thing with that piece of tape. That middle finger is captured here. Make sure that you put that tape on as much of the surface area as possible. Uh, not only should the ink be on as much as the surface area as the finger as possible, but so should the tape. And as you're pulling this off nice and carefully, you're putting it down again from one position to the other, mm -hmm. working from the bottom and up, and going on, so on and so forth. Once all your fingers are done, what you need to do is go in and classify each one of those prints. Classification types, and again, we cover this in detail in the class. And if you kind of take a look at this picture, if you can see that, can you see that? Loop, arch, or whirl. Without getting into too many subclassifications and subcategories, we're going to focus in on those three. Loop, arch, or whirl. So on your sheet of paper, once all your fingerprints are done, you're going to look to see which pattern it is. Loop, arch, or whirl. 65% of humans have uh, loops and arches and whirls are in there and everyone's fingerprint is going to be different. Again, we do a lot more detail. This is just a quick at-home drill or lab you can do on your own uh, for some fingerprinting once you fingerprint yourself. And you can actually fingerprint your brothers and sisters as well and find out what type of fingerprints they have. So if you could go right now, <clears throat> go into each box, look at the pattern, compare it to what I had showed you on the screen, loop, arch, or whirl, and then define which one is which. This is a loop. And I'll get the, up close to see the actual pattern. And you can see just from the graphite that this pattern is discernible just based on the lab that we did using a graphite pencil. So very effective way to at least uh, preliminarily identify your fingerprint pattern. Join us next time. We'll go into fingerprinting even more in more detail and uh, another topic on the next episode.